day. I want to take us through certain uh, online survey collection tools as lecturers, as academics, as students. There will be a point in time where when you need to collect some raw data, possibly from your students, from your recipients, from companies. Uh, the usual way we do collect it manually is via questionnaire. We set out some questions, we wrote some people out that will give us the questions, and they have them filled. We have them collected, collated, and computed in terms of data analysis and all that. But there are better ways of having this done, especially in this technological age where your recipient might not be all available for you. You could have your question set and sent to them via email, or you could have it set and direct them to a particular URL with a particular website where they will see the question, fill the question at their convenience and push the submit it where the output in terms of the responses will be made available to you at your own disposal, at your own convenience as well without you going out and all that. So I have certain tools that I've been able to use and are very valuable especially for the academics and the researchers the authors number one on the list that i have is google online form google online form is very valuable for lecturers who are, all you need to do is have a google email once you have a google email that is gmail you will have access to these free online tools. The second one that I have on the list is SurveyMonkey. It is a very valuable tool too. You can set your survey, your question here. When you're done, you can send your survey to your, res to your recipient by directing them through a link. You can send you can send it to them via email and at the same time you can also you have an access to a, a, an embed link that you can put on your website that is if you have a website it also has some free survey templates templates in the sense that there are already set questions that you can just trickle around and push to your respondents without you starting to disturb yourself about okay what question can i for instance if you intend to find out a particular uh, if you need to say this question around uh, e-learning there are some templates on e-learning questions that you can look through if they align with your with with your target if it be, if they align with your goal you can use them or possibly you simply modify them. It's a very powerful tool. Although some of them come with come with little uh, restrictions until you make certain payments. But talk about having it used for free, especially for minor survey questions that are no more than forty, no more than ten, no more than five, no more, no more than twenty. You can still use them. It also has a paid version if you intend going as far as obtaining it. Another one that I have is Crowd Signal. It's a very powerful tool as well. And I have a host of them, type form. You can see their website on my on, on the screen. Zoho Survey. You could use them as well. Then Sogo Survey. A host of them, then Jot Form. There are there are a lot of them that you could use. But let me take let me start by going through Google Form. In case you do not know how to go about it, I will try to use Google Form. And in my next video, I will try to talk about the Survey Monkey as well. Now, for Google Form, let's go straight online. Just as I said before, you must have 
an email address a google email address before you can have access to google form that is before you can use it and once you have been able to get that the next thing is to go online visit the address forms.google.com now once you're able to log in it brings you up here you have three sections the first one is the question this is where you're going to search the question the second one is the responses that is when you're done with the question and you have published it this is where you'll get to see what the responses are and this is where you can put up the settings of your google form now the first thing to do is to give it a title let me assume that i'm, I'm creating a survey on e-learning readiness here i am with my questions now what are the things i want to set out what are the questions i intend to ask of course before you can talk about e-learning we need to know do they have a mobile phone do they have access to internet subscription can they afford internet subscription? Are there internet service providers within their locality? Questions around that. Okay, now let me say, for instance, I'm starting off with Do you have access to a mobile phone? Now that's the first question. The, the answer is either yes or no. These are the options. I simply, I, I, after I've typed the question, you will see the option here. The column for option, you can type yes can type no okay that is for multiple choice question there are some questions that may not require you having yes or no answers some may require the recipients to directly include what the answers are you could use a short answer for that okay in a situation where you need them to you need them to come up with some essay you could use paragraph for that a very short one anyway in a situation where you could you needed them to to choose multiple options as part of their answers for instance you're trying to say that which of the following is not an african country and you put in there as part of the options nigeria mozambique ghana uh, united states of america then canada of those five questions they needed to choose three of course you cannot be using this multiple choice method of questioning for them you will need to come here and use check box which that they'll be able to choose multiple answers then there is another form of question which is drop down that one wouldn't clearly show the options this way Rather, it will show it as a drop down. Drop down in the sense that it will sh simply show an arrow. If you want this question repeated, possibly you don't want the, the next question is similar to this very one, and you don't want to go to the stress of okay, create question and all of that. You can simply come here and click on duplicate. Once you click on duplicate, it will form this question again as number two. Okay now I, I move on so the next the next question i want to ask is um do you what is your you can see what i just did i simply click on duplicate okay so what what i want to ask now is what is your income range i want to use that to measure their ability to subscribe for data as a nigerian okay just as i said that i have target audience which are university of abuja center for distance learning students and i have their demography already because i know they are nigerians and i'm, for, I'm for, forwarding the, the questions only to nigerians now because the question says nigerian universities you could come up as many questions as possible now you could see another one here an employer an employer a host of them okay now the you know the first one we try to use multiple choice here the first question our first question is a multiple choice question so i'm trying to play around now okay since we have used multiple choice question let's try to use something else here so i'm going to click on checkbox okay checkbox you see i still have my options there when we go back to the responses here, we will see the difference between the two okay so let me come up with another question which has to do with what let me see i want to try and use a drop down this i'll be asking relevant questions obviously we do know the question we want to ask so it's not 
it's not required or compulsory that you set questions that I'm having here as examples. Okay, so now we have another question under the format of drop down. Let me now see that I'm going to see the questions I'm, I want to ask them is uh, what is your your number among other children? Okay, irrelevant question you say, but just for us to play around it. Okay. I will say number one, number one, William. That is on the first one. Number two, number three, number three. I'm assuming that all my respondents they don't have they are no more than three. They don't have more than uh, three children, or they they are, they are from a family of maximum three children. That's odd, anyway. So you, I found that under a drop down method. I mean, on that drop down type of questioning. So let's do another form. Okay. Let me set another question, which is um, let me use the word. Let's try to use around. Uh, okay. And let's say this. What is your name? See where I'm asking the question. What is your full name? Full name. Okay. That will require them to type. Okay. So I'm going to leave this place open for them. You can see short answer text. Yes, basically we have a host of other options to play around, which you can also try your hands on them. Now I have set my questions. The next thing is I want to see how it will even appear before I publish it. So I want to preview what I've set. I really want to see how it's going to appear at the student end here okay so what i'm gonna do is i'll click on this high once you do a click on it it will show you exactly how it will appear at the end for your students you see the first question which is of the format multiple choice see the way it appeared here do you have an access to internet enabled device your student can click yes your student can click no now what is your employment status? You could see the, the, the answer options are different, or different from a trader. That is the question form of checkbox. You could see checkbox. So the student can simply say, I'm, an, I'm employed. Now the next one is drop down, if you remember. Here, let me come back here. The third question says drop down down okay what is your number among other children it dropped down you could see the options wouldn't be displayed until the students and the, the, the recipient do a click on the option on the column now you see number one number two i simply click on number two but let me decide not to do it now you see this message flagged at me this is a required question and you see the, 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 the section painted red. That's coming up because we set the question as required. If we had not clicked this required, it wouldn't have displayed it this way. Okay, so then I click number two. Now, the last one, which has to do with what is your full name? Okay, that one is in the form of short answer. Look at the way it brought out this column for me for it for me to answer my question that is i need to type it okay the recipient will simply type what the answer is corresponding to the question okay so when they're done all they will do is click on submit button here when they are done all they will need to do is submit you could also play around the theme customize the outlook how it's going to appear as student and the questions the 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 text format you could see the way you want the text to appear the size of the text you want to choose an image that will appear uh, at the header as the header and all of that this is where you can indicate all of that okay let's say i clicked i click this i inserted it once you insert it you will see the way it's going to appear at the, uh, on, on, on my questions my survey rather you see okay you see it on the question here that is at my header you could see it's coming up here now 
the background i don't want it pure white so you could play around it and you could see the this the the background changing so i want it green you know stuff like that you could play around okay so when you're done with all of that let's assume that the next thing to do is just as i said you can preview in the situation where you made the mistakes you could go back and undo we type this one the way it is on microsoft word and hold that you can undo you could redo and hold that so when you're done when you're done what you could do is send once you click on send it will show you this very page giving you these options number one if you want to send it via email number two if you want to send create a link and push the link to your recipient this is where you can indicate the email addresses you want to send this you can just paste the email addresses the, the forms will be sent to the form the, the survey will be sent to them now if you create the 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 link you will have this link so you simply send this link to your recipients you can shorten the link this way it will reduce the number and all of that everything it will still come here regardless anyway so now if you want it as an embed code that this is for people that want to still put it on a particular website on a page you could copy this code paste it on a website so this question appears right on that website as if they are on google form here yeah. it will list all of them they simply answer it and submit it there this is a bit technical you might not want to bother yourself about it if you don't have your personal website of your own or you are not sending it to a school to help you publish it on their website now this is what you may possibly want to play around this copy this one then send it to whoever is going to help you answer it or you want to put the email right there now let me do this and copy okay i'm done with my question now i'm done with my question you see i sent the link to this to the, I mean, to this recipient it brought out this option okay so the person will need to log in let me use another email address yeah i have imputed my login details i forwarded it now i mean i've imputed my login details which have given me the privileges of seeing the question now now sorry this is the way it's going to appear at the recipient end. So we on e-learning readiness. See my logo here. Your email will be recorded when you submit this form. Okay. Do you have an access to internet enabled device? I click no. What is your employment status? Unemployed. Okay. Now, what is your number among other children? Number three. That is on the last one. And what is your name gd then i submit you see your response has been recorded this is in accordance with what we set up here you know when we're setting it now you see in accordance with what we set up here you know as i, I told us before that here you could play around i told us that here you could play around what the confirmation message will be the default one that is there is your response has been your response has been recorded. Now look at the feedback here. Your response has been recorded after this student has supplied answer. Now let's come back to our questionnaire. You could see on that response we have seen one. This is for just one person, one hundred percent. Because one hundred percent no, because it's just one person. In a situation where you have you have you've been able to gather like this is just one person so in the situation we've been able to gather like 200 responses you will see the percentages of people that said yes percentage of 10 no you will see for the employment as well you will see percentage of people that said employee you could see it here so from here you could simply analyze that uh, from so so question 80 percent said yes you know stuff like that and this is what will be very much difficult for you to, to do manually if you this is purely coming up with statistical interpretation of the responses you have from your from your questions now okay you see the percentages straight away you see the the responses straight away from this end and when you don't can come here 
and click if you intend to have it downloaded download your responses okay if you want to have it printed if you so desire you can print it okay and i think uh, with this you'll be able to play your way around google form in collecting research data and all that and i hope you check the you you check my channel i still have more goals I'm, I'm going to work on solving monkey the next my next video how you can use it as well and what is the benefits of solving, solving monkey over google from what is the benefits of google from over solving monkey with certain restrictions and all of that i will try to talk about it thank you please subscribe to the channel